Today I want to discuss a case of a teenage girl who ate 40 vitamin C chewable tablets and then got some seriously nasty side effects. Let's go over it together, analyze what might have happened, and also talk about how you can avoid side effects when wanting to supplement vitamin C. The case is based on a Reddit post called Today I Messed Up by Overdosing on Vitamin C. And she starts off by saying, so if anyone's ever had those vitamin C tablets, they'll know they can be pretty tasty sometimes. My dad had bought some that were incredibly delicious and I would snack on them regularly. Now, right off the bat and without wanting to sound judgmental, the first mistake she made was taking something without knowing if she actually needed it. Vitamin C supplements are very popular and I go over the benefits and how to take them correctly in a different video. But definitely make sure before you take a supplement to check if you actually need it. So test your nutrient levels and then work on setting up a diet and supplement regimen that is tailored to your needs. Also, when I first read the post, I actually thought she meant these vitamin C gummies that you give children that don't like to swallow tablets. But she actually meant the chewing tablets. They're not very common in Europe where I live, but I guess they're more common in the United States. And we will go over the difference between normal vitamin C supplements and chewing tablets in a second. First, she continues, one day before I went to school, I realized that we didn't have any food that I could take with me. I didn't want to chew on my fingernails as I had a nasty habit of doing that when I didn't have food. So I had the brilliant idea of grabbing a Ziploc baggie and filling it with vitamin C. I had no idea that you could overdose on it or what those consequences would be. Before we go over her side effects, let's quickly talk about the difference between normal vitamin C supplements and these chewing tablets that she had. When you buy a standard vitamin C supplement, for example in capsules, all you get is ascorbic acid, which is the technical definition of vitamin C. It's usually synthetic, but there also exist whole food vitamin C supplements that usually come from acerola berries or kamu kamu. Some bad supplements will also have a bunch of fillers like magnesium steroids, but that's it. Chewable tablets are made by adding some sweeteners and flavors and also some gum that holds everything together. That means if you're looking for the cleanest possible products, chewable tablets aren't ideal. Now, of course, they help some people that have problems swallowing capsules or tablets, but keep in mind that vitamin C is acidic, which means regular consumption can be problematic for your teeth. For example, a 2012 meta-analysis found that chewing vitamin C tablets significantly increased dental erosion. That's just one of the reasons I generally prefer to get my nutrients in capsules and to buy supplements that really only have that one nutrient, no fillers, nothing else. That way you also avoid possible side effects from these fillers. The post then continues, so at lunch I sat there snacking on them. There were maybe 30 to 40 little tablets and I ate them, all of them. I was doing fine through my class right after lunch, but then I got to my last class and holy crap. My stomach was loud. My teacher kept asking if someone's phone was going off. And then when I told her it was my stomach, she shut up. Until it kept disrupting class, then she sent me to the nurse's office. Okay, so I probably don't need to tell you that eating 40 vitamin C tablets in one sitting is a bad idea. Now, we don't know what brand she ate, but assuming it had a standard dose anywhere from 250 to 500 milligrams per tablet, she was ingesting around 10,000 to 20,000 milligrams of vitamin C. That's a lot. Even vitamin C superdosing protocols, which I don't recommend by the way, have you split up your daily intake into several smaller doses so that they limit the side effects. Now at this point you might be wondering, isn't vitamin C water soluble? So how can you possibly overdose on it? I will tell you in a second why that claim is misleading. But before that, let's continue with the post. She writes, standing up was a bad idea. It felt like my stomach was going to explode out of my butt. I ran to the bathroom and it burned. I was there for a half an hour, unable to do anything else but endure the pain while clutching at my stomach and crying. I finally got to the nurse's office and I couldn't even stand upright. She then talks about how her dad picked her up from school and ends the post by saying, I spent all day and all night on the toilet crying. I thought maybe I was really sick, 
But then I had the idea of Googling whether or not you can OD on vitamin C. You can. It's awful. Okay, first of all, what a crazy story. I'm assuming she's fine right now. Otherwise, she probably wouldn't have written the post. But either way, all the best to her. Let's now discuss what exactly happens when you overdose on vitamin C and where these crazy symptoms came from. A lot of people think that because vitamin C is water soluble and because it doesn't accumulate in your body to any meaningful degree, that you can't overdose on it at all. While this is technically true, keep in mind that while the vitamin C is in your body, it still interacts with other nutrients and tissue in your body. And you can definitely get side effects from that. For example, like I said before, vitamin C, aka ascorbic acid, is, like the name suggests, acidic. If you take it in high amounts, the acid will irritate your stomach, and this can lead to stomach upset, diarrhea, or nausea. This is what happened to her, because taking 10 to 20,000 milligrams of vitamin C is like blasting your stomach with an acidic compound. And it's also the reason why going to the toilet hurts so much. At such doses, the ascorbic acid will irritate anything that it comes in contact with throughout your GI tract as it passes through your body. Now, there are alternative forms of vitamin C supplements that can mitigate this problem. One option would be buffered vitamin C, for example. Here, the ascorbic acid is bound to an alkaline mineral, such as calcium or sodium, for example, that reduces its acidity. Another option would be whole food vitamin C supplements that I mentioned before. And these supplements aren't buffered, but they're usually more low dose. And they also seem to be more gentle on the stomach simply because the vitamin C comes packed in its natural form. I talk about the advantages and disadvantages of synthetic and whole food vitamin C supplements in a different video. So please watch that if you're interested. Another common short-term side effect of vitamin C supplements that she didn't mention, but that you often find in people, is feeling revved up or even anxious. This has to do with vitamin C's ability to whip the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are among the organs with the highest need for vitamin C and they're responsible for the production of many of the hormones that are involved in your stress response. This could be adrenaline, for example, but also cortisol or aldosterone. This is why the adrenal cocktail, which is very popular online, contains vitamin C along with sodium and potassium, which are two other nutrients that are very important for adrenal function. This is a good thing for anyone plagued by fatigue but too much vitamin C can also be overstimulating for people who are completely burned out. I also talk about this in more detail in a different video. Lastly, there are also some long-term side effects if you supplement vitamin C in high doses for too long. For example, isolated vitamin C can lower copper levels. In people with copper toxicity, you want this to happen, but in others, it can be a problem. Isolated vitamin C, so ascorbic acid, has also been shown to knock down ceruloplasmin levels, which is a very important copper-carrying protein in the body. Online, you will also find the risk of kidney stone formation linked to vitamin C, and the idea is that it increases urinary oxalate excretion, which is a type of calcium salt that is responsible for some kidney stones. But the thing is that many doctors have come forward and said that it only applies in theory and that they've never seen this actually take place in practice. Also keep in mind that most of the side effects I just mentioned are linked to isolated and synthetic vitamin C, so ascorbic acid. Whole food vitamin C is somewhat different because it also comes with tyrosinase, which is an enzyme that actually benefits copper metabolism and ceruloplasmin production. So you always have to clearly distinguish between synthetic and whole food vitamin C when you are thinking about supplementing. You can't lump the two together, and which is better really depends on the circumstances and what exactly you want to achieve with the supplement. And that's also what I want to leave you with to wrap up this video. Everyone is different and reacts differently to supplements. Before you buy one, please test your nutrient levels and then start with a very low dose to see how your body reacts. Be very careful with superdosing protocols, especially those that have a one-size-fits-all approach. And if you do happen to get side effects, please talk to an expert and try to understand the biochemistry of what exactly is going on in your body. I have a bunch of videos of all the nutrient interactions on my channel, so make sure to check them out. I hope you like this video and I see you in the next one.